All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 9. So then from here, they had a male face, long hair, horses, crowns of gold. Notice, and their teeth at verse 8 were as the teeth of lions. They had sharp teeth that would tear you. Verse 9, and they had breastplates. So what kind of armored breastplate did they have over here? What kind of breastplate was it? They had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. Iron breastplates. Uh, breastplates and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle so notice that the sound of their wings would be like the sound of a lot of chariots of horses as if it was running into battle this is why a lot of the commentators think that these might be helicopters because of the sound of it but to be quite honest, you got to realize that, no, we take the verse literally. They came from the bottomless pit. Okay, the bottomless pit is where Satan is bound for a thousand years. Revelation chapter 20. These are creatures from hell. That's what it is. But I'll tell you something interesting, though. If we keep reading at verse 10, they had tails like unto scorpions. That's why some people think that they're helicopters, too, because it has a tail. And in the tail, they believe that it will do damage. It has a weapon over there. Was as a, uh, let's see, they had tails like unto scorpions. But what we believe that is it's a tail like a scorpion, see? So that's going to be, man, you don't want one of these things in your house. <laughs> you don't want one of these things flying inside your house. And there were stings in their tails. So they, they had stings in their tails. That's why some people think it may be a chopper with a sting at the end. See? But here's something. We believe that these are demoniac creatures because, like I mentioned to you before in the verses. But I can tell you something interesting, though. There may be a half-truth to that. You might say, how so? The half-truth might be is this, is that uh, John, he was seeing a lot of things about the future including the technology that they had at that time. But obviously, he can't, uh, he can't just say it's a helicopter, it's flight, it's, uh, flight number 267, etc. It's an airplane. He doesn't talk like that. He has to give out a language that they can clearly understand. But there's no doubt these are demoniac creatures, right? But there may be an element of truth. They, it might be technological, too. Okay, see, you're using your head. What does that mean? It could be mingled. Think about aliens, demoniacs, using technology like UFOs. Yeah. How about that? Think about Daniel chapter 2, iron mixed with clay. Yeah, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. A lot of people are thinking about technology mingling with humanity, where there are cyborgs or demoniacs. Yeah. Think about it. A lot of the technology that was born out of today, a lot of it had fruits of a lot of demonic things that happened. That is the result of television, technology, etc. That's the day and age we live in. The Bible says, Lucifer, uh, Jesus Christ said, I beheld as Satan as lightning fallen from heaven. See, he's into technology, the devil. He's into technology, the advanced stuff of technology. You don't think that demoniac creatures from hell, that they're messing up with some advanced tech stuff? Think about some strange reports such as Admiral Byrd's diary and etc., where they claim that they saw these weird stuff, Nazi warships down there, and people who claim that they went into the bottom of the earth, that they saw this weird technological stuff with demoniac creatures in charge of it. Yeah, that, that's food for thought, right? That's who for thought, man. All right, let's look at verse 10, the last part of verse 10. And their power was to hurt men five months. Now notice that their power was to make sure that humanity would be injured for five long months. So they're tormented and tortured. This is why we believe that these seven trumpets, that's the evidence right there, which I kind of mentioned before. That seven trumpets cannot be all mashed up at the end of the tribulation, like boom, 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 like that. So uh, one post-tribber, Kent Hoven, taught that way, which is totally unreasonable. 
You can't do it that way. You can't put like all seven trumpets at the end. It's too crammed up. The verse said right here, had a length of five months for crying out loud. See, so there's no way that you can do that. So that's why we believe that these seven trumpets can go in between somewhere with the seals, yeah. the seven seals. That's why I mentioned it's not like seven seals and all of a sudden, sudden seven trumpets. No, that's not how it goes. You can't do it like that. It's just too crammed up like that. All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. And they had a king over them. All right, who's the king over these demonic locusts? Which, look at this, is the angel of the bottomless pit. Uh, there's this demonic angel down there. Who is this demonic angel down there? He's, notice the name that is given to him. The name that is given to this demoniac creature over here. And which is very interesting, which is going to match uh, concerning Judas Iscariot and the Antichrist. Let's keep reading. They had a king over them. Who's the king? The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, the locusts have no king which proves that these are not ordinary locusts. There's no doubt these are demoniac locusts, which is the angel of the bottomless pit down there at hell. See that? So who is the one reigning over hell down here, you know? The angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. So Abaddon is his Hebrew name. But in the Greek tongue, the Greek Name, hath this name, his name is what? Apollyon. So Abaddon and Apollyon. Abaddon and Apollyon right here. These if you look at the translation, well, this is Greek and Hebrew. What's the English? The English? Perdition. Look at 2 Thessalonians 2 and John 17. 2 Thessalonians 2 and John 17. You know what that's referring to? The Antichrist. How about that? Remember, they made a covenant with death and hell. Remember that? The book of Isaiah? The Antichrist. They want to make a covenant with him. And this Antichrist betrays them by having death flee from them and letting them be tormented. How about that? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Notice what the Bible calls the Antichrist. It calls him perdition. It calls him perdition. Son of perdition. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The Bible says at verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the who? Son of perdition. So right here, this guy means perdition. So, Satan has a son, right? Some of you know that big video, right? Satan has a son. Who is this? <laughs> Who is this creature? I point out the first horseman, right? This first horseman comes out. The Antichrist puts up two fingers, which does not mean peace, but death. And then when he comes out, this man of sin comes out. And then he claims peace when there is no peace. The Antichrist is known as what? The son of perdition. Just like Jesus is the son of God, Satan will have his own boy ready. So perdition is referring to right here to Satan and then if you want a connection to the Antichrist, like I mentioned before, that would be his daddy, son of perdition. Look at John 17. Judas Iscariot is known as the son of perdition. John 17. So that means the Antichrist will be Judas Iscariot. How about that? Judas Iscariot, his spirit is going to... Remember, Judas Iscariot, where did he go? His own place. And they released what? The bottomless pit. See? He has his own apartment room down there where he's rotting. He's burning. But he's going to come out. And when he comes out, man, oh boy, it's going to be pure evil.
John chapter 17. Look at verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost. He's referring to his 12 disciples. But look what he says. There's one. But the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. See, he was talking about Judas Iscariot. He was talking about, you gave me these 12 disciples, I didn't lose one of them except the son of perdition. So that's Judas Iscariot. All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 9. Revelation 9. So Satan's son is going to come out right here, rule over the world. His daddy will be down here already. Let's look at verse 12. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Ain't that scary? So this is known as woe number one. And then God says there's going to be two more woes. What are they? Well, let's keep reading, right? This is going to get messed up, man. 